Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Audi Q3. So we've got a new hood or bonnet to paint. Uh, we've got a couple of blends on the fenders. We've also got those uh, wheel arch flares as you see there. And we've got a couple of bumperettes, so sort of like half bumper bars. Um, and then we've also got like a little um, bumper bar spoiler type thing down the bottom. So as you can see, I've got all the parts set up, waiting for the booth, ready to go in, and let's go paint some shit. Um, so, these bonnets are a real bitch to sound down, pardon my friends. Um, but, we don't have it, but if you ever, if you do paint a lot of Audis or Volkswagen, and you're finding that the sandpaper is just not cutting it, and you just can't sand into the, the new panels, um, get some Eco. It's a 3M product, it's just a sanding disc for your 6 inch sanders. And um, yeah, it's great. It lasts for quite some time. Like, um, if you're sanding one of these hoods or bonnets down with your standard sandpaper, you'll just burn through them. You go like five, six, seven pieces of sandpaper just to sand one of those panels down. Um, I, d I don't get it in because I know that they're a little bit expensive, but um, another advantage of using this wet on wet primer is that you don't actually have to sand new panels. Um, it will actually get adhesion straight to the eco. However, I always do sand the outside of panels just so that you're going over a flat surface. So if you leave the um, just a standard e-coat on the exterior of a panel, you might get that sort of little bit of an orange peel effect uh, and you're going over the top of that. So at least take the top off it. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm still using the um, Gold Pro Light for my wet on wet primers and 2K direct loss VOCs. Um, so some people have said in previous videos, they're like, oh man, it's sad to see the um, the Gold Pro Light, which was my clear coat gun, uh, relegated down to uh, wet on wet. But to me, I see that's a badge of honor, mate. You've earned that position there, little Goldie. And uh, yeah, it's good to see. Um, but anyway, obviously I left the um, the edge, oh sorry, the, the fenders unmasked, like covered over while I was doing the wet on wet. Um, and that serves a couple of purposes. Um, while I'm doing the masking, uh, that gives the wet on wet a little bit of time to flash off and also it makes it so that I don't get any overspray when I am doing the wet on wet onto my blends which I need to be, need to be clean, you know, if, I, if you get uh, wet on wet overspray or seal or overspray on there then you've either got to clean it off or um, put paint over it, um, but yeah. I'm using those collab blades as always and I'm going to start to put a link uh, in the description because I do get quite a few questions about that. <clears throat> Apologies about the cold that I've got today but I'm just in the mood for making some videos. This video did sit in my editor for probably about three months so I did the, the most of the editing side of it about three months ago and just couldn't be bothered doing the narration and putting the camera back on me as I said in some previous videos it um I don't know, it makes it easier for me, and as much as anything, it changes it up. Um, I got to the point there recently where I was getting a little bit over making videos, and sometimes all it needs to be is just changing it up a bit um, by putting the camera on me, and yeah, makes my job more enjoyable, I guess. Um, so yeah, no apologies about not getting everything 100% as maybe quite as good as it was before because as it was going I was just going to stop uploading so um, and yeah look most of the feedback has been positive um, and as far as uh, my voice goes <laughs> you get what you get I guess you know um, yeah I mean I'm in the right mood to make a video although my voice does sound like I've got a bit of a man flu um, but it's all good so obviously just wiping down those panels with some wax and grease remover using the atomizer bottles and the Sontara wipes. <clears throat> Pretty good those wipes, you know. Um, I, I reuse them sometimes, but I'm always very careful that if I am reusing it on a blend panel, that it is 100% or very clean at least. You can open them up and find a clean section sometimes. Um, but yeah, as I've said in previous videos, if I was to say go and wipe that hood down, or the bonnet, um, and then you get some of the black dust from the e-coat on that cloth, and then you go and wipe your blends down, um, where you only really want clear coat, um, so you're not going to put any colour there, um, then some of that black dust can end up uh, sticking into your blend areas, then you go and clear over it, and you've got some black spots underneath it. So 
protect those blends at all costs. Once that's all done, obviously start getting some colour on. Um, pretty cool uh, bonnet flipper we call it. That's that stand that I've got the bonnet on. Um, for the inside of this bonnet, as I said, I'm testing test my memory now. I think I um I think I use a little bit of hardener in the base coat um, for the inside of the bonnet and the outside. Obviously, just two K clearing, but um, I might have ended up clearing it. But you always, obviously, you got to match the finish to the car. Um, sometimes inside the hood is a different color. Sometimes the same color as the body. Sometimes they're full gloss. Sometimes they're semi gloss. But if they're the same color as the car, or even um, even if they're a different color but they're semi-gloss or satin finish, you can just get your base coat, put a bit of um, hardener into that or activator into that, no more than 5%. You don't want to overdo it or else it'll actually kind of never dry. Um, but a little bit in there will give it a little bit more durability and make it so that you don't have to clear coat over it. Um, and I know that at least with water base, uh, waterborne products, um, Axel Alters range anyway, that actually is a uh, recommended method by them anyway. So uh, you don't have to go and use satin clears on the inside of the panel. Um, yeah, so obviously just uh, using my GTI Pro Light T20 1.3mm um, in the, yeah, the blue one. Sorry, not the Pro Light, the, the Pro. Um, but yeah, these days, um, and that shows how this is a bit of an old video, these days I've been using the Segola um, 4600 Extreme Aqua with the DVR cap on it for all one base coat. But yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> Obviously, just put base coat on until it's covered. Usually, it's um, two and a half coats for most colours. Um, that wet on wet primer, or I think they call it sealer in the US, that's obviously going to help with the uh, coverage. Uh, compared to going over straight black, you know. Um, but my rule of thumb's always been get it until it looks covered and then do another half a coat. Uh, it's nothing worse. And I think we've probably all had it happen before, most painters have anyway. Get a car, think it's covered in the booth, get it outside and it's see through. <laughs> you know, you've cleared over it and the base coat isn't quite covered. So yeah, um, when it looks covered, when you think it's covered, put another half coat on and you're usually pretty right. Pretty good booth this one, it's full downdraft, um, obviously heated as well. You can get some pretty clean jobs in it, but sometimes what's been happening lately, it's the, the filters in the roof, and I think they're a little bit overdue, and I've, I've gone onto the boss about it, I'm like, man, we need to change those filters. I've actually been avoiding this booth in the last three or four weeks, because I've painted a few jobs, they look mint off the gun, um, and then you go and bake them, and all these tiny little, um, they look like fish eyes, but they're tiny, and then we were thinking, is it solvent pop? Am I putting too much clear on? Blah, 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 because <clears throat> I always used to go straight for this booth. We'd be battling for this booth. Everyone wants this booth. Um, but then, like, there was one time, and I had that happen to a bonnet, I had to sand it back and re-clear it. And I did it in the other booth, it didn't happen. You know, I did all the same steps, but in the other booth, and it didn't happen. Um, and... It turns out that it, some of those silicon issues uh, pre, in some of my previous videos actually is this boot. Because um, what, what can if we leave it for a long time to flush off, um, then it won't happen. And if we don't bake it, sometimes it won't happen as well. It's like sometimes when you hit it over to bake, the flaps close to obviously um, when you're on spray cycle, the air needs to circulate up out the, um, the vent ventilation system, but they close up to keep the heat in when you're baking. Um, when that happens, it must like uh, sort of shake the roof and bits of crap starts landing in your job. And I've literally seen in some parts sometimes like bits of white or black stuff just landing all through your panel. And then you can see all these little bits of like little slight indentations in your panel. So it's never ending. And at the end of the day, it's uh, I think I said in one of the previous videos, you've got to sort of like be a detective, I guess. As, as a spray painter, you know, when, when you do get those issues coming through, it's not about, you know, just throwing your hands in the air and saying, ah, oh, this is bullshit or whatever. you got to say, well, what caused that? And what can I do next time to make sure it's not going to happen? 
Um, and painting uh, sort of like sides of cars, usually pretty right. But anything that's on the flat in this booth, in and even certain areas of the booth is worse. Like if you're right up against the, the side walls, not the front and back, then they don't seem so bad. But those side walls, like at the edge of the filter, that's where lots of stuff can end up dropping down from the roof too. And, and the first couple of times that the other painter told me that, I thought, just making up excuses. Um, but he's right, he was onto it, you know. But yeah, I just thought I'd answer a couple of questions here for a minute. I've uh, just opened up my comments page. Uh, what is your opinion from Sardajet 1500B Solvent? But they don't have those guns that I know of in Australia. They look pretty damn cool, actually. Um, so I'm sorry, but I can't really give you um, my personal opinion on that gun. Had another one there from Sardajet Schmidt uh, about the DeVilba Space Coat gun. Uh, Jimmo from uh, Red Finish Network, he speaks quite highly of them. And again, they don't have those uh, for sale here in Australia. So, yeah, sorry, I can't uh, really put my two cents in on those couple of guns. What else have we got here to answer? Um, fish eyes are the biggest pain in the ass ever. Damn straight they are. <laughs> That was on my uh, How to Fix Fish Eyes video. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, amazing trick for removing a paint run. That video has been getting some lot, like lots of views lately. It's just picked up. A um, few haters <laughs> saying that you're a hack and you're getting runs. And I'm like, well, I'm your apprentice anyway. And it's not perfect, but it was like a you know 1980s Corolla, whatever. Most of it's uh, pretty positive, but yeah, whatever. Um, the master at work, thank you, buddy. <laughs> what is the first coat? Oh yeah, that would have been the Trip to S. Uh, what I've been using lately as a blending aid, which is what you see me doing here. Let's get back to the video. There you go, I killed a minute. Um, but that's the A and I F one fifty, not the R one fifty mini. Um, and that's got the Standox 599, which is basically a colourless base coat. Well, it's got a slight yellow tinge to it, but it's all good. Um, so that basically just fills in your scratches, as I've said in every single video, and it helps you blend. But it's one of those things that people are like, oh, where do I get it? I've asked the, um, uh, the paint shop for it, and they say they don't have it. Blending clear, oh, they've never heard of it. Look, I can just about guarantee you that every single paint system has got a colourless base coat. I've never came across a system that doesn't have a colourless base coat. It will have a different name and a different coat in each system, but they all have one. Um, anyway, let's go and clear some shit up. Um, so this is the Tebulbus GDI Pro Light Nebula T21.3 mil. Uh, smashes the clear out. Um, still number one, still my number one gun. Um, every time I go to another gun, I'll come back to this and I'll be like, why did I ever leave you? Um, we've got here a donation to the channel, uh, to Gunman Industries, by a guy from here in Perth named Paul. Um, and I made up my awesome gun stand for it, out of a dolly, hammer and dolly, um, and then an air fitting, and then I painted it with the, uh, the plate, so it looked really cool. Um, but this was the same model as the first gun that I ever got, um, the original GTI, not the Pro or the Pro Lite, but um, the main difference that you'll see if you have uh, one of these compared to a Pro or Pro Lite is the size of that air cap. So this is a lot smaller, uh, the diameter of that air cap, whereas the, um, the Pro and the Pro Lite, they're a lot bigger. Um, and to compensate for that, you needed to run, or well, most of the time, with the 1.4s on these. But these days, with the bigger air cap, you're getting a lot more air out and it will draw more paint out, still using a 1.3, which is a smaller tip. One thing that, um, especially after doing those minigun videos, <laughs> I think the spray gun industry needs, like, a standard to just work towards and just keep it uniform across all brands. Like, um, it's one thing I noticed when getting the mini guns is that you would get a 1.2 in the mini and then a 1.2 in the full size gun, and they're different sizes, you know. 1.2 should measure 1.2 millimeter, no matter what. Um, and I really noticed it with the Sata Mini Jet. Like I had a 1.2 mil of the full size uh, Sata 5000, and I think that was like one over 1.3. Yet the 1.2 is smaller. Um, 
if you get a 1.2 in the Mini and the full size, it should measure exactly the same size. I don't know why they do it. Personally, I think it's a bit misleading and unnecessary. It's not just Sada that do it. They all do it, I think. Um, some to a further extent than others, but yeah. What can we do about it? Anyway, just smashing that clear on. How much longer I've got? Yeah, I've got another five minutes. We'll be able to talk a bit of shit. What do we got over here? Any more questions to answer? Superman. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Black is always my favourite colour to spray. I'd probably agree with that, definitely. Off the gun, they look the best. Um, prep work's probably a little bit easier, as long as you get them straight, like, as long as you get those panels straight. Um, you can you can get a few sanding scratches. If you miss a sanding scratch, yeah, bury it with a bit of clear. Yeah, they'll probably shrink back in a couple of days, but, um, yeah, silvers, you won't have that luxury. Um, but, yeah, polishing them, black to a bastard. Um, what do we got here? You're the shit, bro. Love ya. Thanks, Chandler. Aruto Balanos. Probably pronouncing that totally wrong, but you've been a um, big contributor to this channel and a positive influence. Um, hey, Gunny, stay true to who you are. I like your communication style. Very detailed and to the point. Keep going. Ah, Balanos. Thanks, man. Another one, Sardaman Schmidt. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, that was that base coat, techno base coat question. Already covered. Mr. Flyman164, awesome. Right back at ya. Um, another long term contributor uh, to the channel. Ah, mesmerising watching Gunny with a gun in his hand, isn't it? That's all you need. That's all you're here for. You don't give a shit about what I'm saying. You just want to watch me smash a coat of clear on, don't you? Joe RMAS left a comment on my Mad Monday video. That was the last place I worked, actually, and I was having a little bit of a trouble with the panel guys just oh, doing my head in and um, he goes yeah yeah G just get old after a while hey thanks for the reply back keep them guns spraying G man um, yeah sometimes it just gets to the point and you just got to move on and that's my advice to anyone like I had another person like uh, leave another comment on another video he's like oh man um, it's doing my head in where I'm working the the panel beater or the other painter like he just won't let me paint anything and it's just wearing me into the ground man don't if you're if you're confident in your skills, don't be afraid to move around. You know, chase the high, even if it's just for money. You know, if, if you want to get an extra hundred bucks a week, and where you're working won't give it to, and you and you know that, like in your own heart, that you're worth it, go somewhere else, move elsewhere. Um, obviously, I don't want to go and tell people to start quitting their jobs without thinking about it. But um, yeah, that's what I did for just about a year. I kept moving and moving until I found where I was happy again and you know what it's back where I started making these videos um, so yeah lots of people uh, have said even um, uh, what's his name Tony from Tony's Refinishing he said man when you went back there it was like going home again so um, I love this workshop um, I know a lot of you guys do as well we get to paint some pretty nice cars we get, get a good mixer as well um, we get like some really old cars coming in uh, we get car yard work, so yes, you get some pretty damn nice cars coming in, but sometimes they are car yard jobs, and if you don't quote them really cheaply, you lose the job. Um, so you're sort of forced to do little blow-ins and uh, you know spot repairs and stuff like that. Just about finish this video. Um, I did end up doing the polishing on this myself. I didn't get any footage of it because I don't like polishing and I can't be bothered editing. <laughs> uh, yeah, a polishing video. But as you can see, it came out quite nice. Uh, and the next clip's going to be when it's all washed up and out the front. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. video. If you did, leave a big thumbs up. If you'd like to get some gunman merchandise, stubby cool, I've got some hats, shirts, singlets, stuff like that. Go to thegunman.net.au. There's a link right at the end of this video. Until then, I'll see you in the next one, Gunners. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production.